Hello students, welcome back again. This is Mrs. Sonia Singh back to continue with the lesson Acid, Bases and Salts. Today we will be discussing about salts and their types. We will also talk about some important salts and their uses. So let us start with the definition of salt. A salt is an ionic compound which contains a positive ion or cation other than hydrogen ion and a negative ion or anion other than a hydroxyl ion. So what an ionic compound consists of? An ionic compound consists of a positive ion called as cation and a negative ion called as anion. So salt is an ionic compound. Let us talk about family of salts. I hope you remember the formula of writing the chemical names of ionic compounds that you did in class 9th. We have also revised writing the formula in our first chapter of science. So there are certain salts given in the activity 2.13. Try writing the formula of these like potassium sulfate, sodium sulfate, calcium sulfate, magnesium sulfate, copper sulfate, sodium chloride, sodium nitrate, sodium carbonate and ammonium chloride. After writing their formulae, we will find out that which acids and bases neutralize to obtain these salts. Can you make the type of acid and base used to obtain potassium sulfate? Any guesses? Here I have done some for you. Look at potassium sulfate and its formula. The sulfate of potassium sulfate is obtained from acid sulfuric acid and potassium of it is obtained from potassium hydroxide. So, sulfuric acid and potassium hydroxide neutralized to obtain potassium sulfate. Similarly, in sodium sulfate, sodium is obtained from the base sodium hydroxide and sulfate is obtained from acid sulfuric acid. Sodium chloride is obtained from neutralizing hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide base. And sodium nitrate is obtained from neutralizing nitric acid and sodium hydroxide base. I hope you understood this. Now try finding out the acids and bases used to obtain the rest of the salts. Here are some more examples of salts and their acids and bases from which they are derived respectively. You can take a look at the table and ask your doubts if you have any. You have studied about pH of acids and bases according to which we categorize them as weak or strong acids and bases respectively. pH of salts depend upon the type of pH an acid or a base is having. So in general, salts of strong acids and strong bases are neutral with pH value of 7. As strong acids and bases neutralize each other completely to form a neutral salt and water. Salts of strong acids and weak bases are acidic with pH value of less than 7. As the acid does not get neutralized completely, so the salts obtained are slightly acidic in nature. Salts of weak acids and strong bases are basic with pH value of more than 7 as the base does not get neutralized completely so the salts obtained are basic. Here is the table of some salts predicting about their pH and the type of acids and bases used. Look at the table carefully and ask for any doubt related to this. Now let us Talk about some important salts and their uses. Sodium chloride, a common salt. Baking soda or sodium hydrogen carbonate. Washing soda or sodium carbon decahydrate. Bleaching powder or calcium oxychloride. And plaster of Paris or calcium sulfate hemihydrate. The first is sodium chloride. Sea water contains many salts dissolved in it. Sodium chloride is separated from these salts. Deposits of solid salt and they are also found in several parts of the world. These large crystals are often brown due to impurities. This is called rock salt. Beds of rock salts were formed when seas of bygone ages dried up. Rock salt is mined like coal. Now, Common salt is an important raw material for chemicals, for example, sodium hydroxide, baking soda, washing soda and bleaching powder. Now let us discuss about these. 
when electricity is passed through an aqueous solution of sodium chloride which is called as brine it decomposes to form sodium hydroxide the process is called chlor alkali process because of the products formed like chlor for chlorine and alkali for sodium hydroxide if we look at the diagram it shows about how aqueous solution of sodium chloride or brine gets decomposed chlorine gas is given off at the anode the positive electrode and hydrogen gas at the cathode the negative electrode sodium hydroxide solution is formed near the cathode the three different products in this process are all useful as shown in the figure hydrogen is used as fuel to make margarine or vegetable butter and for making ammonia for fertilizers chlorine is used for water treatment in swimming pools for making pvc disinfectant chlorofluorocarbons and pesticides sodium hydroxide is used for degreasing metals soaps and detergents for paper making and artificial fibers Hydrogen and chlorine together are used to make hydrochloric acid which is used for cleaning steel for making ammonium chloride and are used in medicines cosmetics etc chlorine and sodium hydroxide together they are used to make bleach for household bleaches and bleaching fabric for making bleaching powder we use calcium hydroxide solution or slaked lime and pass chlorine gas over it it forms calcium oxychloride which is bleaching powder so there are certain uses of bleaching powder like in textile industries for bleaching cotton bleaching wood pulp in paper factories as an oxidizing agent and for disinfecting drinking water another is baking soda which are which we commonly use in kitchen for making crispy pakoras and cakes which you might be enjoying these days at your home it is obtained by adding carbon dioxide gas and ammonia in sodium chloride solution which forms ammonium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate now can you guess the ph of baking soda yes it's basic in nature so now you can guess very well that why it is used to neutralize acid produced during acidity on heating sodium hydrogen carbonate it produces sodium carbonate water and carbon dioxide when we add a weak acid to sodium hydrogen carbonate it produces the salt of acid and carbon dioxide released the mixture of sodium bicarbonate and mild edible acid is called as baking powder carbon dioxide produced during the reaction causes bread or cake to rise making them soft and spongy it is also used as anti acid as we have already discussed and is also used in soda acid fire extinguishers next is washing soda which is sodium carbonate decahydrate sodium carbonate is obtained by heating baking soda and recrystallization of sodium carbonate gives washing soda it is also a basic salt that consists of 10 molecules of water washing soda is used in glass soap and paper industries used in manufacture of borax used as a cleaning agent and is used for removing permanent hardness of water now let's discuss about an activity in which we'll heat a few crystals of copper sulfate in a dry boiling tube copper sulfate crystals are blue in color on heating we observe that there are water vapors on the inside walls of the test tube and the color of copper sulfate changes to white on adding 2 3 drops of water to heated copper sulfate the blue color of the crystals is restored the blue color of crystals which seem to be dry contain water of crystallization when we heat the crystals this water is removed and the salt turns white If you moisten the crystals again with water you will find that blue color of the crystals reappears. Water of crystallization is the fixed number of water molecules present in one formula unit of a salt. Five water molecules are present in one formula unit of copper sulfate. The chemical formula for hydrated copper sulfate is copper sulfate five molecules of water. One other salt which possesses water of crystallization is gypsum. it has the formula as calcium sulfate with two molecules of water 
on heating gypsum at 373 kelvin it loses water molecules and becomes calcium sulfate hemihydrate that is calcium sulfate is with half molecule of water this is called as plaster of paris plaster of paris is a white powder used by doctors for supporting fractured bones and making toys and materials for decoration and also for smoothing surfaces on adding water to plaster of paris it changes to gypsum once again giving a hard solid mass if you look at the formula of plaster of paris only half molecule of water is attached to it how can half molecule of water be attached to one formula unit of calcium sulfate it means that one molecule of water the full one molecule of water is shared by two molecules of calcium sulfate this is all in the topic of salts thank you class 10th